I know what you're thinking. Who even buys Android tablets anymore? The answer, Samsung seems to think, is people who want not just an excellent canvas for multimedia, but also the multitasking prowess of a laptop without the extra heft. It designed the Galaxy Tab S4 to be a workhorse, featuring a desktop-like mode called Dex. It's laid on top of Android and is supposed to make multitasking easier on the go while maintaining the excellent multimedia experience Samsung's premium slates are known for. It also comes with an S Pen, so you can mark up notes or sketch caricatures on the go. But the main purpose of the Tab S4 is really to help you get work done. The trouble is, that is the one situation where you really can't rely on it. It's a new productivity tool that lets you power a desktop experience right from your phone. It's literally plug and play. In theory, Dex mode on a tablet is a promising idea. It was first introduced as a dock accessory for the Galaxy S8 that turned the Android phone into a desktop-like machine. You could use a dock to hook up a keyboard, mouse, and monitor to the Galaxy handset, essentially using it to power a desktop system. On the Tab S4, Dex is simply a software mode that you can flip on and off through the quick settings panel or the taskbar. This interface makes much more sense on a tablet than on a phone since you don't have to attach a larger screen to multitask. It's already there. But the execution is severely lacking. Dexmo puts a sort of desktop-like interface on the tablet, complete with a taskbar, a systems indicator tray, and a dedicated home screen you can stick shortcut icons on, just like on Windows or Chrome OS. You can even run up to 20 resizable windows at the same time. Any Android app can be launched in this environment, which is nice, but not all of them are optimized for it. So, many things behave weirdly in Dex mode. For example, in Chrome, when you open a new Google Doc from Google Drive, you get an error message that says, oops, but over uh, in Samsung's own browser, when you do the same thing, it opens a new tab like it should. But in some other instances, like opening your Google Calendar in your browser, Chrome is better suited. This is what it looks like in the Samsung browser. And over on Chrome, Calendar looks a little bit more normal. Also, security certificates can't be installed or verified. And my Slack desktop notifications sometimes just don't show up at all. It's a bit of a crapshoot at this point, and it's nearly impossible to predict what will work and how in Dex mode. The desktop environment works best with peripherals like this keyboard and a mouse and an external display. And I highly recommend connecting a Bluetooth mouse because using your fingers or the stylus to highlight words or make precise adjustments is insanely difficult. You can also use your own Bluetooth keyboard or spring $150 for Samsung's version, but that would be a terrible idea. I typed most of this script in the back of a cab, and Samsung's cover was surprisingly sturdy. But the cramped keyboard really isn't ideal for getting any serious work done. It's helpful for firing out quick emails, texts, or tweets, but the undersized keys make typing quickly or accurately a chore. Plus, not all keyboard shortcuts behave as you'd expect. Control plus arrow key doesn't jump to the next word in a document, it switches to the last tab instead. If you want to finish an essay or business proposal, you're better off on a proper laptop. The keys themselves are responsive, comfortable, and feel satisfyingly clicky, but a few of them are redundant. To the left of the spacebar sits a keyboard toggle that brings up the on-screen keyboard, which why does a physical keyboard need a key dedicated to the sole purpose of bringing up a virtual one? Meanwhile, on the right sits a dedicated button for changing your keyboard language, which even a multilingual person like me finds useless. I'd much rather a second control button, which would make hitting shortcuts easier. It's also mind-boggling to me that Samsung has no All Apps button on here. Instead, there's a Search key, which sort of serves as the app's shortcut. Basically, don't buy the keyboard if you already have your own. I connected an iMac keyboard, which offered much better spacing and therefore more accurate typing. But be warned that the shortcuts are still just as quirky. The Tab S4 has redeeming qualities, though. Samsung generously includes the S Pen, which has a more rounded design this year. It enables tools you'll find on the Note phones like Air Command, Translate, and ScreenWrite. 
There's also a live message feature which debuted on the Galaxy Note 8, which is cute, but not very useful. I did enjoy the stylus, which was as responsive and fine-nibbed as I needed it to be as I uncovered my hidden talent as an artist with a specialty for still lives of cleaning products. I also like the 10.5-inch screen here. It's vibrant, sharp, and bright enough to read under direct sunlight. Despite increasing the display size from last year's Tab S3, Samsung managed to retain a relatively dainty footprint. The tablet features intelligent scan as well, which mixes facial recognition and iris detection for faster logins. This even works in landscape mode, although not very consistently, and I almost always chose to enter my PIN instead. The Snapdragon 835 CPU held up well. I didn't have many major hiccups switching between apps or finishing a document with a video playing in the background, although the system has crashed once so far. I don't know if that could have been avoided with more than just 4 gigs of RAM on board, but it'd be nice to get at least 6 gigs. While I'm wishing for things, I wish the audio were better and the battery lasted longer. They're both decent, but for a $650 tablet, these should be stronger. There are things I like about the Tab S4, but there's too much weighing it down, like its price and inability to do what it was supposedly designed to. The Tab S4 has the same starting price as the iPad Pro, although to be fair, Samsung includes its pen for free, while Apple charges you $99 for the pencil. Meanwhile, Microsoft's new Surface Go starts at just $399 and offers a true desktop experience. You can run any Windows app, not just a limited Android skin. Samsung's efforts at creating a sleek machine for multitasking on the go is laudable, but Dexmode's inconsistencies make it more a nightmare than a dream come true.